favorite part, y'all. That guy's watching me. <laughs> that was cool. That was cool. I don't know if I caught that. There's this truck that was driving right next to me, and this kid in the back was looking at me, perplexed. That's cool. You're not wrong to be perplexed, kid. You're not wrong, most people are. It's pretty common. I'm a very uh, authentic individual that has a pretty radical way of life. You know, I was just listening to this Lenten retreat this uh, Orthodox priest was like talking about how in order to be like truly Christian like you have to be like really really radical yeah so it's perfect for us then like a self-fulfilling prophecy because I've always been a very spiritual person that would collect various Christian items and like I would find them randomly like it's almost like I'm supposed to find them and I believe that about so many things anyway, because I'm crazy, but um, I feel like it's specifically there for me to find it. Like only I would find it and appreciate it. Like uh, the other day, I was just randomly picking up trash outside my restaurant. And I found some, like, Christian worksheet. I'll show it to you later. It's such a joke, but... <laughs> God wants me to show you how stupid and useless the Protestant religion is. And, uh... <laughs> it's, uh, it's like this, uh... It's this worksheet for kids. sound like a, a snob. I'm a snob about religion. I'm really not. Like, I think that I am a snob about my own religion. And I should be. Everybody should be a snob about the things that they care about. Because this probably sounds really arrogant and this probably sounds like ignorant on a few levels. Okay? So don't think I don't know that. But I don't think that there's one way to worship. But I think that there's plenty of wrong ways to worship. I'll, I'll say that. Okay? And, and I've, I've seen a lot of them. Now that doesn't mean that I've never gotten anything out of it. Because I'm one of those people that you know, I could, I could go to, like, the Church of Satan and probably get something out of it, you know? And I think that you're wrong. If you're one of these people that says, oh, I, I can't, I can't even be in this environment. Because just being in this environment is, is, is wrong. It's blasphemous. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, man, with your attitude, nobody would be getting to heaven. With your attitude... Jesus didn't have 
that attitude. Jesus was all inclusive, okay? But you had to follow him and you had to trust him. And you couldn't just do it half seas or quarter seas. You had to do it all the way. And even his own disciples couldn't do it all the way. I mean, Peter denied him three times. And he wept about it. But... <laughs> so profound it's so profound because it just shows you that like we're all so flawed like the saints were flawed but they give us hope that we can still achieve that spiritual greatness if we just keep the faith quite a bit. I don't think it's a problem to cry. I think it's more a problem if you don't cry. Or if you think that there's some sort of virtue in being this emotionless sociopath. Now I do know that there are a lot of people that cry for attention or they cry because they want something or they cry um, because they don't know what else to do. They feel defeated. I cry for that last reason, but I mainly cry because I'm just so overwhelmed by my emotions, I'm overwhelmed by God's grace, I'm overwhelmed by my salvation, I'm overwhelmed by the things in my life that have happened that have led me to this point. watching the most recent videos that there was this like really annoying sound like kind of sound don't you love how there's like a gas station across the street from another gas station we love capitalism don't we it's just so great. I love having all these options. It's like, here a slave, there a slave, everywhere a slave, a slave. Now I get it. A lot of it is the way of the world, you know? Money, exchange, slavery, social status. But I feel like the kinds of people that are like obsessed with that and they see value in that, those people are not good. No, they can't help it. That's just the way they're wired. My brother is in town and he, he's that way. And I'll be honest with you, and I, I feel guilty about this. I feel guilty every holiday season. And I'm sure that there are plenty of people in the vortex that understand what I'm about to say, okay? And th this is one of the reasons why I'm so comforted by the gospel. Because the good news, literally, that's what gospel means, the good news of our salvation is that it does not come from this world. It does not come from our family. It does not come from our friend group. It does not come from our social stats. It does not come from our job. It does not come from 
works. Now, faith without works is dead, for sure. But we can perform every good work in the world, and it still doesn't hold a candle to what Jesus did for us. Okay? Now, we should perform as many good works as we possibly can because of what Jesus did for us. We shouldn't rest on our laurels and say, oh, we're covered. God's grace has us. I mean, that's true, but you shouldn't take advantage of that, you know? But anyway, my uh, family is very, very boring. They just do what they're told. They follow orders. They trust the police. They support our troops, you know? <laughs> they're just like such typical Republicans, which is why I thought I was a liberal for so long, mainly because I disagreed with the Iraq war so fervently. And uh, I don't think that Democrats or liberals or whatever actually disagree with the stuff that they say that they disagree with. I, it's very rare. Like that guy that I, I was talking about in a, a YouTube video, uh, I, I can't even pronounce his name right, so I don't want to butcher it. His name is Sean, um, but he's another comic friend of mine. And um, we've gotten into several arguments about politics, but he's really cool. He's a good dude. Um, he's on the left. Um, we both hate the same things. We both hate corporations and we both hate useless wars and we hate lobbying, you know? So there's that element of like understanding that this country is obsessed with money. But he thinks that it's mainly on the right. And that's the problem with politics in general is that it's just a blame game. It's a sporting event, it's a spectacle. Because we get along on so many levels, but because he's on the left and I'm on the right, he assumes that, um, well, I, he doesn't assume this about me, but I, I think that he assumes this about most of the people that are on the right, um, which is probably true. You know, that people only care about making money and they only care about um, promoting like their religion or whatever. You know, I think about Psalm number one a lot when it comes to that um, promotion of my beliefs. That's not how you're going to win people. Um, I don't think that that's what people want, though. I mean, I, I don't think that, like, leftists are trying to change anybody's mind on the right, and I don't think that people on the right are trying to change people's minds on the left. I feel like there's so much vitriol between those two groups of people that it's kind of ridiculous to even <laughs> think that some sort of compromise could be made. Um, you can't really compromise on issues like abortion anyway. You just can't. You know, you either agree with it or you don't. You can't really compromise on issues like um, the jab. You either agree with it or you don't. Um, a lot of people disagree with me on this. They'd say that, oh no, it's more in the middle. It's more gray. It's really not. It's really not. Like these issues are very uh, extreme. Like, like when COVID started, if, if you knew from the very beginning that all of this was horseshit, like, you're obviously my people, okay? There are plenty of people that, you know, after a time, they came to the conclusion that the media was full of shit. And after a time, they became convinced that, oh, doctors are not our friends. Just like, you know, you see with these Republicans that are, like, realizing that maybe the police are not going to have our backs. But because they've been trained their entire life 
to just trust them, to trust the whole system, to trust the social order. They're really, really butthurt that things are not what they say. So this country that they, they've been told is the greatest country in the world, that's why, that's why they put their hope in Trump, who said, let's make America great again. Well, tell that to kids that are sold into sex slavery. This country was ever fucking great. Tell them that. Tell people that, that are discriminated against for various reasons. And the state knows that they don't have any money to get out of the situation that the state puts them in. Okay? Now, I'm not saying that people... don't ever like put themselves in a position to be taken advantage of. You see this happen a lot. It's unfortunate that, that so many people don't know um, how screwed up this world really is. And so they trust the world and they trust the government and they trust the social programs. And they have no idea like, like how much they're going to get screwed over because of that faith that they have in the welfare state. So w when I try to explain this to my friend Sean, that, you know, these social programs do not benefit the people using them. Social programs only benefit pedophiles. And an ever expanding, ever increasing state. Okay? So, most Republicans, though, do not care about poor people. This is blatantly obvious by their rhetoric. They do not care about poor people. They don't care about anybody struggling. And I mean, the boomer generation is the absolute worst about this. It's that pick yourself up by your bootstraps, you know. Now, I do think that that's a better mentality than being coddled and treated like a victim and all that shit. But... I don't think that a lot of people have that kind of uh, mentality that they can uh, handle the stress that, that comes from, you know, doing it yourself. So they'd rather have, you know, an analyst figure them out. They'd rather have a doctor you know, throw pills at them and pretend that they're going to be better off if they take those pills three times a day, you know. It's like, it's, it's just sad to me, you know, how, how people trust anybody but themselves to take care of themselves. You know, it makes no sense to me. But anyway... I need my shoes, hold on. My shoes! Oh, this is a pretty long video. I try to do shorter videos because of everybody's attention span. I feel like people are more likely to watch the video if it's shorter, but honestly, I don't care. Just. Let's keep talking, damn it. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so, uh, last night... At Thanksgiving dinner... You know, my parents' friends... Uh, their daughter and their son-in-law... And their granddaughter came over... And we all got into this collective communal argument at the table about the differences between our generations. It was very fun. I don't know if you've ever gotten into an argument involving like seven people, but it was pretty cool. Basically, I think that my parents like are a lot more 
uh, I don't want to say understanding, but I mean, there's some there's some things that they they'll never get, you know, like marijuana. They'll never get it because they've been brainwashed to believe that cannabis is bad by politicians, by media, by like different social groups that were vilified. Okay, so they don't understand it. Like there's no like convincing them that a plant that grows in the ground could possibly be medicinal. You know, they're not gonna understand that. Where's my hat? Oh, there it is. Just like, they're never gonna convince me, you know, to trust the media. But like their whole generation is totally brainwashed by everything they see on the TV. But, you know, we were just talking about how, like, the expectations. They're like boomers, they see millennials as, like, totally useless. And, you know, let's face it, most millennials really are. Um, you know, I'm one of the few millennials that refused to get any government money during all of COVID. You know, I went and got a second job because I didn't want to get government money. And people thought I was out of my mind because I could have made a lot more money had I done that. But that that's not good for me though. Psychologically, that's not good for me. And I, I don't think that people are conscious of that. Like how the decisions that they make on a day-to-day -day basis are not good for them in the long run. They're not good for them overall. So they might, like the best example I could cite would be the psychiatric drugs so if you take one pill and it has all these side effects it's like oh cool my depression's gone but now I'm overweight <laughs> you know now I can't ejaculate now I can't cry when I should cry because something's fucked up you know like it's like these medications have such horrible side effects and people don't care about the long list of side effects all they care about is well it solves this one problem solve this one problem and accumulate 10 to 15 more makes no sense but I think that all the generations are screwed up I don't think that's just a, a boomer thing or a millennial thing. I think that everybody's pretty screwed up. I think the American dream's complete crap. It seems like the only people that benefit from that so-called dream are like immigrants. So, it's just, uh, it's just silly. But, uh, Yeah, but it, it's like last night I was I was noticing though my my friend uh, or my my dad's friend's daughter was just she was just getting so frustrated. She just reminded me of myself back when I used to be a liberal. Cause I'm pretty sure that she's on the left. Cause she was like in favor of like socialized medicine and universal health care and all that shit. Um I think that the only decent health care would be health care that you seek out yourself by people that actually understand medicine and they understand the human body and they understand like life stuff. You don't have enough people that have like a versatile um, range of knowledge and because of that like they only know what they know. So if that's the case, like, you're probably not going to get very good treatment. But, um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I'm really grateful that I'm not in that position anymore where I'm getting offended because my parents don't understand me, you know? Like, she was talking about her art. She was talking, she's a pagan. She was talking about, like, um... Uh... 
don't remember what it was. It was something about, like, um, alchemy. Or, and it's like her mom just, like, didn't care. Like, she just kept brushing her off and, like, trying to change the subject. And I'm like, dude, I mean, this is... This is totally, like, my experience. You know, and I'm pretty sure that, like, a lot of a lot of kids feel that way about their parents. Like, their parents just don't care about what they care about and they don't understand them. Because they don't value that. I don't, the boomer generation doesn't value that. Like... I think millennials, they, they care more about, you know, being accepted. And it's like, that's just stupid, you know? Like, it's, it's just not that important. Like, you should accept yourself. You should learn how to love yourself and appreciate yourself. And that should be enough for you. And I, I know it, it feels good, you know, whenever other people, like, understand you and, you know, your your parents, like approve of what you do and they're proud of you and all that shit but you know it's it's not the most important thing though it really isn't I think I'm gonna do another video on that entirely because like that validation that people want um that they get from social media um you know it's futile it doesn't mean anything it really doesn't because you wouldn't need that from other people if you had it from yourself. And if you had a relationship with God, that would solve all your problems.